Uh, as a trauma director, I'm in charge of all of the trauma patients in the hospital at any particular time. Uh, I was on my run. <laughs> and I was three miles away from home when I got the message. So I had to actually turn around and start running home so I could get to my car. And, and I got the message at that time period that there were 10 gunshot wound victims coming into the hospital. Uh, she came in, she was alive, and she was responsive to us. She was able to squeeze Dr. Freeze's uh, hand on command and let go. He was able to be there for her, to give her comfort as, as, as he was coordinating her care at that time period. Now, because uh, she was not talking to us at that time, um, we can't determine how alert she was, but we can say at least in our, in our medical terminology that uh, she was at least being able to think. The neurosurgeons did the operation of stopping the bleeding, uh, you know, give, relieving the pressure on the area that might swell later on uh, by taking out portions of her skull. And then uh, they also uh, debrided some tissue as needed be and then so on and then they uh, closed uh, the uh, operative area. At the end of that case, uh, because of the nature of the injury and the amount of force that she took, there were multiple fractures throughout her face, and one of it included the orbit or the eye socket itself. So the ophthalmologist uh, came in and did what's called a lateral canthotomy, where they relieved the pressure uh, of the socket itself. And then after that, uh, we actually took her back to the CT scanner to get a quick uh, post-operative, after-surgery type of uh, film to make sure everything is doing well. And then we took her to the intensive care unit where we, again, uh, continued on with her, uh, her care.